Hello sailors. I'm Captain Tom Tercy from the Maryland School of Sailing and Seamanship and I'd like to tell you a little bit about getting weather information over your single sideman radio when you are far out at sea. Both text, written text, and graphic information. So let's take a look. This is the Furuno Radio Fax and this technology goes back to the middle of the last century. It uses a continuous wave and it broadcasts little interruptions in that wave and then it uses this equipment, which is a single sideband receive only, and it prints out a weather uh, forecast map on thermal paper. In order to get one page of a forecast, it might take 10, 15, 20 minutes uh, over a period of time. And on one of the NOAA channels on the internet, there's a list of frequencies. Now what is shown here is just a little clip of that list of frequencies. But here is the complete list for a particular geographic area. And this shows you what are the various transmissions that are made at various times. And what you have to do is tune in your Iruno radio fax to that frequency, and you will then receive that image, OK? And in this column right here, FTP mail ID, are some code numbers. We're going to come back to these numbers in a few minutes. Okay, So that's the old-fashioned technology. Now, what has happened is that you can receive those same forecasts, graphic forecasts, over the single sideband radio using current-day digital technology with a laptop computer. So basically, what you need is a single sideband radio the laptop computer, you need a modem that connects the two together, email software so that you can send an email request to NOAA in order to send back to you the weather forecast image that you want. And you need a list of weather files. And in that online list that I showed you, these FTP mail column, these are the file numbers. But one of the issues that you have is knowing actually what that different graphic means to you. What will you need for the area that you plan to sail? So what I recommend that you do is before you go to sea is to explore on the internet the various files that are available. When you're in connection with the internet, you can download those files very easily. Okay, But when you go to C and you do it with the single sideband radio, it's going to take a period of time to receive that transmission. So I'll show you all that in a second here. But basically, you need the radio, the laptop computer, and the modem, Okay, and the software to operate them. So let's go through a few examples. One, let's download from the internet some weather images. And I want to show you what you need to do to make up your list of images that you have an interest in for when you go to sea. So this is your advanced work that you have to do prior to going to sea because it's easy to operate off the internet. And then when you go to sea, you'll have your list of different images that you're going to be interested in. And having experimented with them on the internet, you're going to have some knowledge of what you're asking for and what you're going to receive when you request it via single sideband. So let's go online first off, and I'm going to show you that if I go online and I Google NOAA radio facts, and I go here and you see here Marine Radio Facts Charts, National Weather Service, and there's various geographic areas that I can choose from. I'm going to choose Northwest Atlantic, and that brings me to this page, and in here is a whole list of various weather graphics that you can select from. So my recommendation to you is you do this and you actually look at some of these graphics so that you can become familiar before going to see with what those graphics are all about. So here's one of the graphics. And you can see this is current. In other words, this is, I just downloaded this from the internet. And this was issued at uh, this time. It's valid for two hours earlier. And you can see here in this map, here's Florida. Here's the east coast of the US. Here's a big low pressure system up there in Canada. And here are the effects of it. Here's a warm front, a cold front, a high pressure system, et cetera. 
okay? You can go to this website and download various weather graphics, just the way I just did, and study them and become familiar with them. Here's a 24-hour forecast. If I choose that one, a 24-hour forecast for this particular region of the world, I get this. This says this was issued on 14 March today at 0400 Greenwich time, and it's valid for tomorrow, okay? And this is the forecast for then. This is a 24-hour surface forecast. Let's look at this again. If I go to the, let's say, the 72-hour forecast, I get that download, and I open that, and here's the 72-hour forecast, and it's issued on a certain date, and it's valid three days from now. Is that, here's the east coast of the U.S. and Florida. Here's the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, and so you have the big picture weather forecast of what is forecast for three days from now. So go on the internet, experiment with the various images, compile a list of images that you think that you will be interested in when you go to sea, and then you have that list available to you for request via single sideband. So the next step of this is, okay, now I go to sea, and I'm gonna now request this same set of images via my single sideband radio. Well, you do need an email program for your, for your laptop computer that will communicate with your radio, and I'll show you that in a few minutes, but let me first show you the email itself that you're gonna send. So you're gonna send an email to NOAA at this address here, and it's gonna be from your radio call sign, because when you uh, register your email, you're gonna to have to register it with your radio call sign, okay? The subject line, as it says here, you can put any subject that you want. I usually put in the file that I'm requesting so that when I go back and look through my files, I know which file I've requested. And this ppae10.tif is the file that I'm requesting. And I got that file from that list that I originally showed you. But let me show you one more thing. You can also get it from the image itself that you just requested. So here's one of those images that I just downloaded. And you notice up here in the corner, ppae10.tif, that's the file number for this particular image. So come back here again, and I put that file number in here. Now the setup of this email, it's very specific in how it's set up. And your email is going to go directly to the NOAA server that, that has this information on it. And you have to ask the NOAA server in very specific sequence of terms what you're asking for. Open CD fax. CD means change directory, means change file to the fax directory. Then it says get this file, quit. So here's what I get in return. Here's a 24-hour forecast. Over the internet, it'll take a few seconds to get this image. Over your single sideband radio, depending on the quality of your transmission and the quality of your reception and the quality of your antenna, it may take a few minutes to receive it. It may take five or 10 minutes to receive it over your single sideband. But the point is you can receive it uh, thousands of miles at sea get this quality graphic in that in in doing that okay so the next thing i want to show you is for coastal weather text forecast now there's written text i'm going to go online again i'm going to go to noaa marine text i'm going to google that term google noaa marine text Marine text forecast by zone, and I'm going to choose that one. And again, I have choices, geographic areas. I'm going to choose Atlantic. And in this, I now have a whole listing of various text forecasts, just like I had a listing of graphic forecasts. Okay, so you can go through this again on the internet at home and choose a text forecast that you're interested in. 
This says offshore marine zone forecasts and a whole bunch of those. Coastal marine forecasts under offshore marine forecasts and it says Georgia's Bank. And notice here this number, ANZ805. That is the file number of that marine text forecast. So I request that forecast, and here it is in a narrative form. So let me go back here now. And hidden up here in this paragraph, there's this little statement here, a graphic version of this page is available. So I'm going to choose that graphic version, and it brings me to this map. Again, I'm online. I'm going to choose here the East Coast, and it gives me different geographic areas. All right. And then these different color bands, it shows uh, near shore, near coastal, and offshore. And then there's another one, there's, which is high seas, which I'll show you in a few minutes. But notice on this graphic that there are these different code numbers. And you see these code numbers, ANZ233. All right. ANZ270. Those are the codes that you will use in requesting that forecast. So I can either, when I'm online, I can activate this particular zone right here and it's going to give me the forecast. It shows me a little map of what I asked for and here's the forecast itself. So again, my point to you is study this online at home before you go to sea. Make up lists of the information that you want to get the files that you want to be able to download, and then when you're at sea, you'll be prepared to do that. So this is the near shore, coastal, and the offshore is the outer band. If I choose the outer band here, it's going to bring me to this page, and let's say I pick New England, and it brings me to this offshore forecast area, and again, we see ANZ805. We saw that one before. And if I choose ANZ805, it's going to give me this forecast. All right, now I've educated myself on the different file numbers. I now know what files I want. I'm now going to create an email to send to NOAA. And in order to create that email, again, I have to follow a rigorous setup of my email because the NOAA FTP server will only respond if you have accurately and properly structured your email. All right. So this is one of the challenges. And this is upper lowercase sensitive. All right. Now, I'm going to explain to you what these different lines mean in this email. But basically what it's doing is it's directing the NOAA FTP server to the particular file that you are interested in. So I'm going to show you this graphic here. And this basically is the structure of the NOAA FTP server file system. They call them directories, but I'll call them files. But here's the root directory or the root file. The next one is data, forecast, marine. And then under marine, there's a bunch of choices. I've highlighted here offshore. And under offshore, there's a bunch of choices. I've highlighted AN. And within AN, there are these file numbers. All right. So these are called directories. And in that email that I just showed you, CD is telling the, the FTP server to change directory to data. When you get to data, it says change dire directory to forecasts. When you get there, change directory to marine, and so forth. And that walks you through this file structure down to the actual file that you want. And that's what your email has to, to direct the FTP server to do. We're requesting ANZ805. We tell the computer to go through this different file system and give me text forecast 805 and then you tell it to quit. So I go through all of that, and here's what the NOAA reply is. And you see within this, you see down here ANZ805, and here is the forecast that they sent. So this is what you can receive at sea through your single sideband radio 
to your laptop computer, and you will have this on the screen of your laptop computer. Okay? So that is both uh, images, which I first showed you, and now this is text. The next one is high seas weather forecast files. And you go through the same situ uh, situation that I previously described for, for the others. And I can Google high seas weather text. And it's going to give me these two options. I'll Google NOAA high seas weather text. OK. U.S. High Seas Marine Text Forecast by Area. And it brings me to this chart, okay, and it has the various geographic areas within the oceans. And if I choose this one right here, North Atlantic, I can get that forecast here. This is doing it online, okay? But now what we want to do is do it by the single sideband radio. So again, I have to go to creating an email to send to NOAA, same sort of a deal. I have to tell the computer about the structure, the file structure to go through. And this is the file that I want. And this, again, is shown in this structure. These are the different directories shown in blue. And you see I have under marine, I have coastal, Great Lakes, high seas, near shore, offshore. I've chosen high seas here. And under high seas, I have these various options. And I chosen North Atlantic is the forecast that I want. So I put that into my email. I want to go through this file structure, get north underline Atlantic dot text, quit. And when I do that, it then brings me to the forecast. Here's the NOAA forecast reply. And it goes on page after page after page. All right. So that's the other way of getting this directly, going directly to the NOAA forecast. I have a question. When you were talking about writing those emails, the very specific structure for the lines, and then you showed here, here, and here on the directory, are those directories somewhere? I mean, how would we know how to write those emails? All right, good question. I'm going to show you this. You see this one link here, TGFTP weather. I'm going to just hit the link here, but you can Google TGFTP weather, and it's going to bring you to this website. This is part of the NOAA website. Now, follow me on this, because this is going to show you the structure that I showed in that structure diagram, OK? So this is their basically their home page, if you will. And within this home page, you see two choices here, data and facts. If I click data, that's going to bring me, that's going to show me everything under the data set of files. So I'm going to click data, and it brings me to this set of files. I'm going to next click forecasts, and it's going to bring me to this set of files. I'm going to, under that, I'm going to click marine. And it's going to bring me to this set of files. I'm going to then click High Seas. It's going to bring me to this set of files. I'm going to click at North Atlantic, and it brings me to the actual forecast. Now, what I did in doing that, I learned all of this basically by going to this website and experimenting myself online with these different files. But in this file structure that I showed you, I drew this file structure based on going through that FTP website and experimenting with different files to find out how it was actually structured. But I learned how it was structured by just playing around with that file, this file. OK? Gotcha. So I start, uh, these are the two that you have to start with, either data, which will give you text, or facts, which will give you the graphics. OK? And then you just play around with it and follow it through as I have just done here. OK? Great. Thanks. You're welcome.
The next thing I want to show you is doing it by way of airmail sail mail because airmail sail mail has a set of files already set up that helps you do this. So here is airmail sail mail and within this you see this file system here on the left. You see your inbox and your outbox. Okay. And if I go to my outbox, I previously written an email PPAE10. So this is going through the sale mail structure. And I'm going to send an email from my single sideband radio to sale docs, which is part of sale mail. And I'm going to ask for this particular file. Okay. Once I've structured the email, I'm going to then press this mailbox that's right here. All right, that puts it in my outbox. And then I'm going to go to propagation. So I go here, and this is the propagation screen. Across the top row are the Greenwich times in whole hours. Down this column are the frequencies for transmission and reception. And this column are the shore stations, the radio stations that you will communicate. And what happens here is that um, your transmission, your radio transmission, will go to one of these stations. That station will dump it into the internet and send your email on to its destination. It will then receive the reply to your email and retransmit it to you when you ask for it. Now, in order to do this successfully, you have to choose the best frequency and the best station to be working from. So what you do, here is the current time, 00 Greenwich. That is midnight at Greenwich. And under, the, under this column for the current time, you see these percentages. And these are probabilities of successful transmission for these various frequencies. So if you chose 4805, you would expect a 99% probability. 7822, 100%. But if you choose 18234, probability is 59%. So you want to choose the highest probability for the current time. So in this case, I can choose either 7822 or 10523. So let's supposing that I choose 10523. My laptop computer will automatically set my single sideband radio to this frequency, 10523, if I'm using Lunenburg Station. So here's Lunenburg Station, which we were on. But if I switch to Rock Hill, South Carolina, I'm going to get a different set of probabilities for the different frequencies for the current time. So as you see that for Rock Hill, the 10331 goes to 99%, but you see these two 7961.4 and 7981.4 are both at 100% probability. So what you have to do is make a decision on which station you want to use and then which frequency you want to choose. And once you've made those choices, then your single sideband frequency will be set and you'll be ready for your transmissions. Now I'm going to do this here. Hit modules, HF terminal, and it brings you to this box showing the HF radio status. Then I'm going to send my request. This now sent that request and then I can hit the transmit again and it just received a reply. So you see this inbox with the flames on it. That means that you have a new email that came back to you. And here it is. It's lit up. So this is what I just asked for. Here's the email. And down at the bottom of that email page is a little icon. And I can hit that. And here's what was just transmitted back to me. Okay. That 24-hour forecast, etc. So that's the, the method by which you get that information back. Now, let me go to another option, Windows here at the top. I'm going to go to Catalogs. 
pi c's, which is lit up here, and I choose, let's say this one, FZNT 01 KWBC, what that has done is it created an email in my outbox. Here's my outbox. It's created a new email in my outbox. I can then go again and transmit that over my single sideband radio. It's now transmitted. I'm now going to receive it. And I now go to my inbox again. And here is that forecast. All right. Let me then show you one other capability here. And up here, what's called grib files. And this is, again, on airmail, sailmail. Now, you can change the, the shape of this box here. And you're, you're saying, basically, I want to see the grib files for this area of the world. And you can also, down here, choose the models that are used in preparing this weather information. Now, grib files are uh, satellite and computer generated, but they are not reviewed or modified or amended in any way by a meteorologist. So it's raw data that you're getting. But I'm choosing the GFS model. And I then hit my request button. And it brings me here. And within that request button, I can ask for what characteristics I want. Here's pressure at mean sea level. Here's wind. Here's various things that I can ask for. I can then post the request. All right, it's now posted. I can then close this out. And if I go to my outbox, here's the email we just created. That's the information that's going to go to, to sail docs, which is part of sail mail. I'm going back to the modules, HF terminal. I'm going to hit it here. I'm going to transmit it. There we go. We received. I close that out. I go to my inbox again. I go to that. I go down to my icon at the bottom here. This is the grib file. So this grib file, again, I say this is computer generated off of satellite observations. It's not examined by a... Um, a meteorologist, but you see you have the wind direction and strength, and you have the various barometric pressures. All right, so I'm using sail mail as my email for either the NOAA FTP email or for the sail mail email. All right, and I'm doing that via a Windows laptop. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that and that you find it helpful for your blue water sailing in the future. And as a closing note, I'd like to point out that whatever I've showed you here for use with the single sideband radio can also be done with any satellite communicator with email capability, such as Iridium Go and the Imarsat device. So thank you for joining us, and have a great sail.